Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me for this CNCF on-demand webinar on Kubernetes security single pane of glass. The tool that we will explore today, the open source that we will explore today is called Cubescape. And what I will try to show you is how you can use Cubescape to overcome the increasing complexity of Kubernetes security across all the different things that can go wrong for misconfigurations, to vulnerabilities, role-based access control, secrets that may be out there, network policies, and more. The idea is to see across all the different things and get a holistic view of what's happening in and across your clusters. Uh, we will be happy if you start us um, on GitHub. Uh, Cubescape is a, a fast-growing project and we would love you to take part of it. You can join the discussion in our Discord or you can visit us now on our website to learn more uh, about Cubescape and our roadmap and what we plan to do with it. Just a little bit uh, about myself. My name is Shauli. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders uh, of Armo. I'm a software developer turned entrepreneur. And today I really enjoy uh, my life. You know, I wake up in the morning, I go surfing. Then I go and I build Kubernetes security products for the rest of the day go back home, put my three kids to sleep, and, and repeat. Um, a lot of fun uh, with the kids uh, and with my life, and I really enjoy it. And, you know, um, that's just great to be here and share uh, with this community and uh, what we've been building. So what is Cubescape? Cubescape is really becoming one of the most popular Kubernetes security open source tools out there on GitHub. Uh, getting great reviews, you know, in, in in GitHub, in Reddit, in, in Hacker News from our users, uh, gaining a lot of stars and really blowing up in terms of the number of stars and followers of the project, which is something that we are super, super proud of. Uh, but what does it do? The idea is very simple. Uh, it's to get very quickly into a very deep and good understanding of what is going on in your cluster. So you can go to GitHub. There is a one-line install script that you can use. You get your results, you go to the Cubescape portal, uh, which is a SaaS version that we've deployed for you, which gives you a single pane of glass across all of your clusters. And you can choose to add Cubescape to your CI CD and find issues early on and avoid delays. Uh, but you can also add it to your cluster to get continuous security, uh, to get drift control, and continuously monitor your posture on an ongoing manner. When you make the decision, uh, if you put Cubescape uh, in your uh, CI/CD, basically runs as a CLI within your within your existing DevOps tools um, in in your CI/CD. Uh, we have integrations with GitHub, GitLab, all of the J Jenkins, uh, Circle CI, all of the different uh, pipelines and tools that are available. Um, and also, you can put Cubescape as a cron job and a simple namespace in your clusters for continuous monitoring. It will wake up and do the scans for you and continuously identify whether drifts are happening and give you results over time. If you think about what is creating a single pane of glass for Kubernetes, what does that even mean? It basically means taking all of the different things that can go wrong and collecting them together and give you and enable you to define and enforce best practices across them based on pre-built frameworks and best practices that are there in the industry and standards. This also goes to compliance, enabling you to identify and prevent drifts continuously from your CICD to production across all of those elements, and then enabling you through remediation and recommendation and contextual insights because you have this single pane of glass to continuously tighten your environment. And when we think about the data or the elements that go into what should go into a single pane of glass, it is the different configurations of your Kubernetes, the cluster itself, the configurations of your workloads and deployments, the actual user activity, which can be taken from the audit log, vulnerability assessments of all the images and software running in your environment, the different RBAC role-based access controls that exist in your cluster and whether there is some excessive privileges that shouldn't be there. And finally, taking all of that 
against compliance benchmarks because these give you a very structured way of understanding the risk and the posture of your cluster. So that is what we are aiming to do in Cubescape. We are going in that direction and we already have a lot of that installed. Uh, I encourage you to look at our roadmap and see more. And today I'm gonna to show with you what we have uh, to date and how you can use it to get single pane of glass security for your own clusters. When we look at today, um, basically the idea is that we give you a risk analysis and compliance across all your clusters. We visualize your RBAC, your role-based access control, and enable you to query it and understand in a very informative way and to investigate what's going on with the different roles in your clusters and image scanning of the actual code running in your clusters. So it's not just in the repository, it gives you an actual view of the images currently running in your cluster and what your current risk is in the cluster. And we do it across um, regions, we do it across um, providers, um, we are pre-integrated with GKE, AKS, EKS and OpenShift, we are uh, partners with all of those and you can actually use and take it to any one of those environments. So this was theory, but let's show you in practice, what does this look like? If you are, if you wanna get the single pen of glass, if you wanna install it and run with it, what does it look like? So any travel, any journey that you take with us starts with our GitHub page, where you basically take Cubescape and install it in your cluster. Let me show you how you do that. So I go to GitHub. You have very detailed information in GitHub about our, um, uh, our control and how to install it. And here is the installation line. It's basically an install script that downloads the latest version of Cubescape as a CLI to your cluster. I'm gonna copy that. And of course it is all open source. So you can see exactly what this install does. You know, I'm not trying to get you to run, uh, install into a pipe of bash um, similar, like without knowing what's going on, you can completely read it, uh, but I've read it and I know what's there, so I feel free to run it in my cluster. I have here a GKE cluster. I'm just gonna run this command. It basically downloads Cubescape into my environment and now Cubescape is installed. Um, right now it is running on this computer, on this cloud shell, and it will be pointed at whatever cluster the, the cube CTL, the cube cutter is currently um, pointed at. So if I do a uh, cube cutter uh, get pods, okay, I will go through the GKE authentication. Okay, and I see that I have uh, an Ipster application running here. Um, it is the Ipster Google shop. Uh, the Google Ipster shop microservices demo that we're running. You can see that some of, some of it is failing right now, but this is not of interest to us uh, at this point. Some of it is out of CPU. And let's run a scan. Let's see what's going on in this cluster because there is much more going on in this cluster than just this hipster. There is the namespace of cube, of cube system as well. And maybe other things that are installed here. All I need to do is do Cubescape scan and I'm gonna choose framework NSA just for the sake of it, which will basically test my cluster against the NSA guidance for Kubernetes security. We will let it run and I get a summary right here in my STD out of the status and the risk of my cluster. You can see that some of the tests have been skipped. The skip tests are control, uh, uh, control, uh, control plane tests that if you want to run, you need to enable specifically or host level tests uh, that require us to put um, a node, uh, a daemon set, temporary daemon set on your host. And we do not want to do it by default. We want you to enable that with a specific, um, uh, a specific command. You can see here that if you do want to do that, uh, you're going to need to run a uh, Cubescape. Where is it? You can see it in here. 
you need to put submit if you want to upload it. And you can, let's see, host. Yeah, um, minus minus enable host scan. This is the um, this is the flag that will actually scan all your hosts as well. And then all of those tests will not be skipped. So I got that. Uh, I have a, a view of my cluster right here on my in my STD out. I can actually export it uh, directly to a JSON and put it as part of my CI CD. Now let's go and see the single pane of glass as it is described in, uh, in the UI of Cubescape. Um, you get a link right here to, to the UI, so you can actually go directly there. Um, but I also, I'm also, I'm already registered, so I'm gonna go directly and show it to you. So this is where you get to. And you can see, I see all of my different clusters. I can see my risk across all of the clusters that I have. And some of the clusters that I have here for a longer time, I also see the risk over time for that, um, for that cluster. And I can also see it against different frameworks. Um, I will go into this cluster just for this demonstration. Now, what we have here as a single pane of glass is now I will basically be able to see my cluster across different elements of security of Kubernetes. So we have three tabs here, which, which you can use, and we are also always enhancing it. And I have a section at the end of this uh, session where I'm sharing with you our roadmap and where we wanna go. And we would love to get your comments and thoughts about new ideas of what we can do to make this tool better. But as for now, let's look at what we have here and the different aspects of security that you have right now in, um, in Cubescape. The first tab is about the risk. Risk is basically configurations. This takes into account all of the different parameters of what's going on in your cluster and gives you a very clear view of the risk in your cluster. It takes into account misconfigurations. It takes into account vulnerabilities and it takes into account role-based access control. All of that is driven into the risk level and the risk is built on different controls. So we have in the different frameworks, we have different controls that we run against your clusters. And some of these controls may just be configuration, but some of these controls may be correlating both, for example, a misconfiguration and a scanning problem. So for example, um, a very um, you know, legitimate control would be, let's not have misconfigured, highly privileged containers that also have critical remote code execution vulnerabilities in them. So this is a control that actually brings together a few of the assets that I've talked about before, configuration, vulnerability scanning, and RBAC into a play where you can prioritize it and give it higher, um, higher severity and things that you need to take care of. If you look in, usually when I look into the different controls that fail, in my clusters, I like to organize them by severity and look at the critical ones first. Uh, as you remember, um, we skipped the control plane uh, type um, controls. And this is just because I didn't wanna do all the integration at this point, um, but it is very simple and you have instructions on how to do it. Uh, if you would like to, to for GKE, for AWS, uh, EKS, etc. When I look here, I see that just as an example that I have um, one of these tests that have failed, uh, application credentials and configuration files. So we have a developer that probably forgot or, or put um, because they thought it's gonna be easier for them, the, the application credentials, something a secret in the configuration file of the deployment. So this is something uh, that we should take care of. Um, and just the next one is look at that privilege container. Basically, um, someone is running container as privilege, which is definitely not the best practice. If I go into this, I can see that actually I have more than one um, privilege containers running. I have nine of them, but eight of them are actually in the cube system um, namespace. And these are already set up as exceptions. We recommend you to put those in exceptions and the system can do it for you. And the idea is that you have nothing to do about that. Frankly, 
uh, the cube proxy and all of the different uh, cube system pods, they need to run as privileged in order for the cluster to operate. So no need to go and fix them. But this recommendation service, that's, that's a different story. You want to check what's going on there. And you can see here that you can go directly into that deployment and understand what is wrong with it. So if you look at that, we see that in line 69, we have privileged container. We're going to go there and to take us directly to uh, the problematic line and will show us exactly how to solve it. Going forward in, in the next editions of Cubescape, we would like you to be able to see a diff view of the fixed and, 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 the, and the error YAML. And you will be able to accept the fixed version and even create a pull request directly from here to your Git in order to fix it back in the CI CD. So your next update, you're going to have um, a, a complete and solved version of this microservice. Another thing that is super helpful for users of Cubescape is that you can take all of those control uh, and frameworks and embed them into your CI CD in a customized manner. Customized manner means that you can create, for example, a policy that will run in your CI CD for the development cluster, and another policy that will run in the US, or another policy that will run for one product or another product. And you can create those policies, you can create as many policies and as many frameworks as you would like, and you can deploy them and you will see them all in a single screen. You can see that I already have here like Shaoli Corp One and my custom framework here. And I've created all kinds of frameworks that I use in different places in my organizations, in my organization. And it is very easy for me to create one. If I go to frameworks here, customize their own framework, I get into a screen that enables me to create my own custom framework with, which, with whichever control I would like to have. So let's do Shaoli custom framework. And I'm just going to say a demo for a CNCF live webinar, not live, it's not live, um, on demand webinar. And now I can choose the controls that I want to have and I want to deploy in this, um, in this, in this uh, framework. For example, I can say, okay, privilege is something that I'm concerned about. So I'm going to not allow port forwarding privileges or I'm not going to allow my developers to put privileged containers or OSPID IPC privileges or allow privilege escalations. Also, I like them to put limits. Um, so I would uh, ask them to put CPU limits and memory limits in every YAML uh, that they uh, deploy in every uh, workload that they deploy here. And I um, also don't want them to use, well, let's do just that. I'm going to click apply and I have uh, my new framework here. It is here and now I can put it anywhere in my organization. I can use integrations. I can just install it on any cluster. It is automatically deployed to any cluster or any Cubescape that is already running in your environment. But if you want to put it back in your CI CD, you can take, for example, let's take GitHub, for example, you can go and you can see uh, the very simple instructions on how to edit uh, to GitHub. Oh, I clicked on the image. Here we go. Um, you can see here the, the very simple example on how to create a GitHub action that will check any new, any update to the YAML against this custom framework. Um, all you need to do is change this NSA to the new custom framework that you have created. So this is how you get the control and all of the good things that Cubescape gives you across all of the different elements from vulnerability scaling to ARBA control into your clusters in a very, very easy to use way. If you remember uh, before in the beginning, uh, when I shared the presentation, I, I told you you can use Cubescape in your CI/CD just like I just showed you, or you can use it for continuous scans and continuous posture control of your cluster. Um, it is very easy to do that. If you go back to our settings and you go and you can see all your clusters, 
you can also add a new cluster. And when you add a new cluster, you can choose whether you want to add it to your CI CD, just like we did before with this installation script and then just running it with your account ID. So you will see the results here. Or you can uh, use our Helm repo and very easy Helm installation to add our namespace into your uh, cluster. And that namespace will regularly, and you can actually configure it, um, scan your cluster for vulnerabilities, ARBA control, misconfiguration, brings everything here into the single place where you can monitor all your clusters and all of your environment uh, in a very easy to use way. If you have any questions about, uh, you know, Helm and how to use that and how to install, uh, please reach out to us. It is literally a copy and paste of those uh, three commands into your cluster. So that's the first, that, that's the single pane of glass, but what is it composed of? So we have all of the different controls that failed. How do we see and what do we see in terms of vulnerabilities? So Cubescape automatically integrates with the repositories that are connected to your cluster. Let me go to event scanning. Okay, I have some problem with my connection here. Just do it again. Ah, <laughs> they just literally updated the production version as we speak, right? You can see that the risk was changed to configuration scanning, and you can see that uh, we have a new, so you got it live. You have a new uh, updated compliance uh, screen right here. Um, but let's go back to our um, to our um, uh, demonstration, and we will look at image scanning. So image scanning, you can see, uh, basically uh, we have a scanner running within your cluster. It pre-integrates with the repositories from which your cluster is pulling images, and it only looks at the images that you pull and that are running and are deployed in your cluster. So you can actually understand the the vulnerability situation of your cluster right now, what is running right now in your cluster. And we divide it by critical, high, medium vulnerabilities, very, very standard. We can show you exactly which of the vulnerabilities have fixes. So 28 out of those 57 critical vulnerabilities actually have fixes. You can upgrade to a new version. And we can also show you which ones are RCE. RCE, remote code execution vulnerabilities are more problematic especially if they exist on an outbound facing uh, ingress uh, and workload because they can be actually uh, abused without having access like all through the network. So this is super important to understand and know. And we can filter and see only the critical vulnerabilities uh, and see them here and then go directly into specific, for example, let's take the load generator here, for example, I can go into it and I can see Oh, well, here everything is negligible, negligible and, and medium, but we can see everything and all the vulnerabilities that exist in this specific um, uh, image. And you have a view of all the images across time in your clusters. This is, um, this, is, this is where we started to do it. And you can see I didn't do anything and didn't change my cluster, so you can see it running here. Next, the final part of our view and our overview um, of, of, of what's going on in your cluster is the role-based access control. The role-based access control visualizer enables you to actually see what's going on in your cluster in terms of role-based access control. Uh, the default view shows you not all the roles um, because if you were if we were to show you all of the roles, it will be and all of the role binding and verbs and the resources, it will be a graph that you would not be able to manage. This is how complex RBAC really is uh, in your clusters. If you just use GKE, for example, just the default roles and permissions that, G that GKE creates in your clusters uh, are quite extensive. Um, so you might think you might have just a few roles, but you wouldn't believe how many roles you might really have in your clusters. Um, 
So you can see exactly, you know, which uh, subjects have access to which resources, and um, but it is sometimes hard to investigate it if you see everything. Sometimes you want to focus just on a specific part of what's going on in your cluster. So we've created for you built-in queries, popular queries that we've seen users using, and we added them to give you a very easy way to understand what's going on in your cluster. Um, just as an example, one of the very popular uh, searches is who can exec into a pod, because if someone can exec into a pod, they can run code on that pod. So we can see that in our case, there is these are the pods. There is a, a role which is called common webhooks. It's an automated GKE role. And there is a user, common webhooks, that can actually do anything, literally anything to pods. Now, I'm not sure, you know, whether I want the GKE common webhooks to have that type of access. It really depends on what that, that role is doing. But in general, this is something that I need to look into and maybe reduce. And then I also see that I have the cluster admin role that as an admin can do anything on any resource. And that is um, that is just how Kubernetes works. And, but I see that the system masters group and the user system storage and version generator, a version migrator have admin role in my clusters. This is probably okay. Um, it is good that I don't see any user here like Jonathan, for example, uh, with cluster admin rights uh, on my cluster. So that's good. Another very popular query is unassigned roles. Unassigned roles are basically garbage. They are roles that if a user or if an attacker gets, a, gets hold of and can assign himself to those roles, will be able to do things in your clusters. Um, you don't want them. It is just uh, a best practice to eliminate and use as less um, unassigned roles as possible. So here you can see them very quickly and investigate what you want to do with them. Um, another um, another uh, one that uh, is, is really nice is the port forwarding. You can see all of the different port forwarding uh, capabilities in your clusters. I'm not going to go deep into that, uh, but you can see everything that's going on there. Now, of course, you might also want to have your own investigation of your cluster uh, role-based access control privileges. So you can clear the list and choose to do an investigation. An investigation being, basically brings you this floating investigation pane where you can now decide what you want to put on the map. Let's take an, as an example, secrets. So I look at secrets and I can see that secrets, um, they, of course, there are resources in, um, in my cluster. And now I can see all of the different roles that, and what they can do on a resource. So for example, I can see that this role can delete, get, list, watch uh, uh, through the API any secret. And that's the cube system that is perfectly okay. We have the system controller here. We have uh, 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 the, uh, the, GLD, the, the GLBC, and we have all of those uh, roles, which are actually uh, kind of interesting. This role is a bit interesting. So what is this edit role? Uh, and why can it do create, delete, et cetera, uh, to, my, uh, to any secrets? Let's see which subjects. Okay, this is all, we, we see that there, is no, there are no subjects attached to this role. So, no one is really using this role, but if someone was using this role, I would say, okay, who this guy is, you know, who this role is, what do they, who this subject is, why do, it, why do they need this edit role? But this is even a worse, or maybe something that I need to investigate, why do I even have this role uh, in my organization? Of course, there's that mean that um, can do anything they want to the secret. And if I, and again, there is no subject created to this admin, uh, Please bear in mind that this is not the sysadmin, this is not the cluster admin, this is another admin role that I have in my cluster. Um, this role, for example, they do have a subject. Let's look at all the subjects. So we can see that this subject can use this role to get secrets in my environment. And this is actually pre pretty much a standard. The cube system, of course, needs to do that. But this is the way you can actually investigate and see exactly what's going on in your cluster. And then 
you can clear and do any investigation you want uh, all over again, of course. So these are the, this is the, the way we build the, the, the single pane of glass. We take the RBAC data, we take the image scanning data, we take all the misconfigurations and we take them together into a single risk pane where you can understand what's wrong with your cluster. You can do it across clusters and across clouds. Um, the compliance is another thing and I'm, I'm gonna show it to you. And as you saw, it, it just came out of the oven. It was literally updated. Um, our production was updated with this feature as I was recording uh, this webinar. What we're doing next is taking this single pane of glass to the next level. We're going to do, um, and our roadmap is built of several things that are intended to help DevOps and to help security, help, help security architects get a better understanding of what's going on in their clusters. If I go back to my presentation, and I'm gonna to go to overview of what's coming next, this is where we're going. So we need, of course, a lot of time and work to do that. And we need a lot of support. You can ever, you can see our roadmap publicly available on our GitHub page, but we wanna take you from CICD to continuous posture control and even to random security, bring all of that together into a single pane of glass to see what's going on in all your clusters. And what's coming up really, really soon is the single pane of glass dashboard, which will basically take all of the information we have, prioritize it for you, and give you a very clear view of what's going on in any one of your clusters. So here on the left-hand side, you will have all of your clusters prioritized already by the risk that is calculated based on all of the things that we talked about, your role-based access control, your misconfigurations, and your vulnerabilities. And if you over one of those, um, those clusters, you will see exactly the score you got against the default framework, all of the vulnerabilities that exist, and you will be able to go directly here to analyze your role-based access control. Um, and then of course you have the configuration risk and the vulnerability risk right here uh, in a single place and a prioritized list, which we call my work, that will help you understand what you need to fix first. And these are the things that you need to attend to in the most urgent of ways. Um, and it will use, it, it already, it's already using prioritizing based on the context of each issue. And again, context goes to not only configuration, but also vulnerabilities, role-based access, access control, and in the future data that we're gonna bring from your runtime environment. So this is a summary that we're going uh, into, and we would love you to take part of, you know, building this, you know, go to our GitHub, create a pull request, see what we're doing, look at our roadmap, um, and, you know, we're looking forward to taking it even further. And, and that is it, you know, we're done. And uh, we would love to keep in touch, you know, let's connect. You can connect uh, with me via email. You can uh, LinkedIn me, I would love to be in touch. You can uh, follow me on Twitter. I will probably follow you back. Uh, I really um, enthusiast in, in, in Twitter. And you have our, of course, GitHub page. Would love you if you star us um, and join the discussion on our Discord or visit us. Um, it will, I'm Shauli, again, I'm the CEO of Armo uh, and the creator of Cubescape. We are very excited about Cubescape. We see it going places. We want anyone and we want to help any um, developer, any DevOps engineer or security architect to be able to understand their clusters very easily uh, via this open source contribution tool that we've created. Um, yeah, and that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't bore you too much. And please ping me and be in touch. Let me know if anything uh, you might need. We love, love, love to get feedback. Thank you so much.